Hey guys, before we get started, I just wanted to share a couple announcements. Um, first, I recently created a new website. It's www.thoughtfuldots.com. And something that I think will be useful for you guys is if you go to the top of the website and click on tools I use, that will take you directly to my Amazon shop where I've linked um, some of my most used products. And also on the website, there is a newsletter option where you guys can put in your email and subscribe to my newsletter so that you can be notified of any new um, books or courses that I may be doing in the future. And secondly, speaking of books, I did just create this 80 page ebook that is a beginner's guide to dot mandala painting that I am currently selling on Etsy. And this is perfect for anyone who is just beginning dot painting or maybe just curious about it or interested but not sure where to start. Um, in the ebook, I go through uh, a list of tools that you need as a beginner to get started with dot painting, as well as some tips on how to get the correct paint consistency. And I also include three step-by-step -step tutorials um, as well as I included six color palette ideas. So if you guys could do me a favor and just share this with anybody that you think might be interested in dot painting or share it on social media or any of the Facebook groups you guys might be a part of. And lastly, I just want to remind you of the subscriber option that I offer over on Instagram. Um, I will be honest and let you know that I currently am on Facebook YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, and I'm constantly getting questions from people on how to do certain things. And I used to try my best to respond to every comment. And this is just not realistic or sustainable and absolutely takes a toll on my mental health. So I have for now um, turned off my notifications for YouTube comments. So I am no longer responding to every comment on YouTube like I used to. I do every once in a while, take a look, and I'll respond here and there. But for the most part, I am no longer responding to YouTube comments. So if you have a question that you would like to ask me directly, becoming an Instagram subscriber is the best option. Um, it's $4.99 a month over on Instagram, and you'll be given a subscriber badge that lets me know uh, when you send me a direct message, it lets me know that you're a subscriber and you'll get priority of responses to direct messages. Instagram subscribers also receive exclusive content and tutorials as well as subscriber-only Q&As. So there's that. Hope to see you guys over there. Hey guys, welcome back to another tutorial video. Today we are going to be painting on a black mug. I'm really hoping this ring light reflection is not too obnoxious, but I need it for good lighting, so we'll just try to deal with it. So I'm gonna be painting this black mug. I bought these, I bought a set of them on Amazon. I'll see if I can find a link for that and put it in the description below. So this is the mug I'll be painting and I will be using Deco Art Americana Multi-Surface Satin Paint. If you are painting a mug, you want to make sure that you are using a multi-surface paint. You do not want to use just the regular acrylic. It will not work. It will not stay on the mug. And if you use the baking method, which I'll go over, it will not work with regular acrylic. It has to be multi-surface. So make sure that it says multi-surface right on the label there. Folk Art also makes a multi-surface that you can use. Um, and there's some other brands out there as well. But this is my favorite. And I'm going to read the directions to you on the back. Shake well, apply one to two coats, air cure for seven days. For a top rack, dishwasher safe finish, clean surface well with alcohol. Paint glass or glaze ceramic piece. Allow to dry for four days. Place in a cool oven. Set temperature to 325. 
and bake for 30 minutes. Cool with the oven door partially open. So that is typically what I do with my mugs is I paint them and I don't typically let them dry for four days, but that's what the directions say. Um, I usually do 24 hours or a little bit longer. And then I put them in a cool oven and bake them at 325 for 30 minutes. And that kind of cures the paint and makes it a lot longer lasting and more durable on the mug. And while it does say that if you do that method, the bake method, that it makes it um, top rack dishwasher safe, if I do sell these mugs, I always let the um, customer know that the paint is dishwasher safe, top rack dishwasher safe, but I do recommend hand washing. This is still a piece of art, so I feel that we need to treat it as such, and I don't think that it should go in the dishwasher. Um, unless it has to for some reason, but I think hand washing only um, is the best way to preserve and keep safe that art. Okay, so these are the paints that I'll be using. I'm doing a rainbow. And I'll be using this nail stylus tool set. I will leave a link in the description below that has the millimeter sizes of all of these. And then I will also be using these tools by Happy Dotting Company that has the millimeter size right on them. So I'll be showing you those as we go. I think I might use this tool. It's like a, of course it's dirty. Um, it's like a really fine stylus tool. So really small pointy ends. And this is from the Happy Dotting Company as well. And then I'll be using a paint palette. Okay, that is all. Let's get started. Okay, so I'm going to start with these three colors. The red, orange, yellow. And if you see the paint kind of get like not very well blended like this, then just take a paintbrush and mix it together so that it's more consistent and mixed. Okay. I am just gonna take some of this um, nail polish remover and just clean the surface. So I'm gonna take a paper towel. I'm just clean this off. I can see a bunch of fingerprints on there. So just get off any oils from the surface. Make sure it's nice and clean. So I'm just going to see how long this is. About four and a half. Okay, so it's about four and a half, so half of that is 2.25, which is about here. So that's our halfway, so I'm just going to make a little mark there. And then I'm just eyeballing how far away I want the design from the handle, so that's where I chose right there. We have the center, and then... As far as guide marks go, I'm not going to be making any today. Um, if you do want them, I don't know if they make dry erase markers in the color white. If they do, then you could totally do guide marks and that would be great. I just don't have that. Um, and the red, I feel like you can barely see it. So I'm just going to freehand today. So I at least just have my center of here. So that's where I'm going to start. I'm going to start with the size nine millimeter tool. And I'm going to start with red. Then 
That is not really a good circle. The paint seems a little bit thick. I'm gonna just wipe that off. Hmm. So yeah, unfortunately this paint is a little bit thick, but we don't want to thin it with water or any medium because it could affect the multi-surfaceness of it. So yeah, it might be a little bit more difficult, um, but we have to do our best with what we have. So I'm going to try this again. Okay, so I feel like that's a bit of a more round dot. So we will just work with that. I'm gonna take the small end of the pink tool and go in with this orange first row of dots. Then I'm going to use the same small end of the pink tool and get the yellow and just go in between every other dot that we just made. Okay, and now we are just going to go back through and put a dot in between all of the dots that we just made. I'm going to use the four and a half tool and I'm going to pour some green. I'm actually going to pour the rest of the colors. I can already tell that's a little thick. So yeah, these multi-surface are a different consistency than the regular deco art. Um, acrylics so something to keep in mind they might be a little bit harder to work with okay so the next part is a little bit harder since we don't have guide marks so we are just going to make a dot and then try to do even spacing all the way around
I'm going to take the large end of the white tool and get the blue. And I'm going to make a dot right above all of the green ones. I'm going to take the small end of the pink tool and walk the dots. Okay, now I'm going to take the purple and going to do a swoosh pattern. So I want it to start right in between these last two petals. So I dot with the large end of the green and then I'm taking the small end of the green and dragging it downward. We're going to do that all the way around. We're going to take the size five millimeter and get the red color. And we are just going to dot, and this paint is so thick, this red one especially, right above those purple swooshes. I'm going to take the small end of the pink tool and go for the orange color. I'm going to take the large end of the blue tool and go for the yellow and just make some dots right above. And then I'm going to take the small end of the blue tool
I'm going to take the large end of the blue tool and go to the green. I need a little bit more. Actually, I'm going to get a smaller tool, so the larger end of the white tool. And I'm going to go right about here and make a swoosh downward. We're just going to do that all the way around. Now we're going to take the six and a half size tool and get the blue color. I actually need a little bit more. We're going to dot right in between those green swooshes that we just made. This blue is really thick. I'm going to take the larger end of the pink tool and go for the purple color. and just make dots above the purple all the way around. And now I'm gonna take the small end of the green tool and walk the dots. Okay, now I'm going to take this small end of the green tool and get the orange color. And we are just going to make some 
swooshes in between these two patterns. And do the same thing with the yellow. We'll make the yellow slightly shorter. And I'm gonna use the same tool and go with green. And do the same thing, a little bit shorter on the green. Okay, so once this dries, you could add top dots if you want. Um, I would not add more than one top dot, so two layers total. If you do too many layers of top dots, sometimes when you bake it, um, you can get a lot of little bubbles in the paint. I think just because it's too thick. So I'm going to let this dry and then I'm going to add one layer of top dots and then we will be done. So here's the mug after doing top dots and I also found this mug that I painted, uh, I feel like it's been a month or maybe two months and it's just been sitting on my shelf. So I'm going to go ahead and bake this one too. So we are just going to follow the directions on the back of the multi-surface paint. Um, like I said, this one has been sitting on my shelf for like over a month. So that one's cured. And this one um, actually has been sitting for about a week now. So these are both ready to go in the oven. The directions say... The directions are kind of confusing, but I think what it says is if you are going to do the bake method, then let it dry uh, for four days before baking. So I'm going to put these in a cool oven and set it to 325 and bake for 30 minutes. And then I will show you guys what they look like after. Okay, so I just took these out of the oven and I wanted to show you, so like I mentioned before, if you do top dots or if the paint is thick, like this purple one, it can kind of see how they're like dented in and then there's some little bubbles. So that is a possibility when doing the bake method. Um, so... This one only has one layer, and you can see it's a lot better. So I do recommend uh, just doing one layer to avoid all those bumps. But the bake method, I mean, you can avoid it altogether, and you can just do the air dry, and um, it will still be on there pretty good. But baking, like I've tried to like scrape this off with my nail. I've even used one of the tools to try to get it off and it's really on there. It's baked on there really good. So for mugs especially, and if you are selling them, uh, I do recommend using the bake method because it just bakes it on there. So it's not coming off. I hope you guys enjoyed.